everybody, welcome to this video and installment of Modern Faith. I'm Jonathan Gaylord, the pastor at Yakinville United Methodist Church, and today I am joined by my good friend Katie Todd, uh, who I introduced in the video, so I'm not going to introduce her here. Uh, but today's video is a little bit longer because we just get into a great conversation about faith and parenting in the midst of a pandemic. So I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, and before we jump over to that conversation, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And there's a little bell icon down underneath the video that you can hit, uh, and that will give you notifications about every time Yadkinville UMC posts a new video. So after you've hit that like button and now hit that subscribe button, Let's get on with our conversation. All right. Well, we are here with uh, Katie Barrett Todd, um, and she is uh, the pastor campus minister at UKirk, uh, which is the campus ministry for the Presbyterian Church USA in Greensboro. So, serving all of the church, all of the campuses over there, and she can tell us more about that. Uh, but she is also the mom of two elementary aged kids. And so, we are going to talk about. Uh, parenting uh, and faithful parenting during a pandemic. So, uh, Katie, I'll let you, what, what do we need to know about you as we enter into this conversation? Oh, wow. Um, let's see. Yes, Ukirk, Greensboro, uh, campus ministry for five schools in and around Greensboro. Um, so actually, it's interesting that we're doing this topic because part of my ministry is a residential ministry. So during the pandemic, I have not only been a parent to two elementary age children, I've kind of also become a parent to college students as well. I've morphed from being just the campus minister into kind of um, a landlord and a parent about, you know, make good choices mm -hmm. and a little bit more than yeah. normal. Um, but I am sitting right now in the library of my home. I don't know if you can see it back in the corner. There's the little um, alphabet up at the top. We turned our library, which is supposed to be a dining room in our house, but we're not dining room people. Yeah. We are book people. Mm -hmm. um, so we turned it into the school room. Um, so I am sitting at the big desk that my two children share for school right now. Um, so yeah, parenting elementary students who are remote learners um, during the pandemic, I am going to put on my resume that I am passing second and third grade again. Nice. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Um, and where you are is completely remote. Like there isn't even, an, isn't even an option to be in person, correct? Well, it's so uh, Guilford County Schools is changing. Um, my second grader right now could be in the classroom, mm -hmm. but we kept her remote because of her teacher. Uh, the third graders and above are all remote until um, at least January, mm -hmm. until Guilford County Schools makes a, a change. So for us, it was just easier to be, um, okay, apparently I have a child. <laughs> Parenting <laughs> during a pandemic right there. Parenting yeah. during a pandemic, yep. Um, for us uh, right now, it was just easier to have everybody stay remote. Mm -hmm. um, and I have... Yeah, I've never really paid as much attention to what my children are learning in school right now as I have since March of this past year. Mm -hmm. um, so Guilford County Schools, they can't really make up their mind about what they want to do as far as who is remote and who is at mm -hmm. home. So we just decided we're staying remote. And then when they fluctuate on decisions, it doesn't really affect us. Yeah. It's one of the nice things about uh, being clergy and Katie's husband is also a, a pastor um, is the, the flexibility to kind of make those decisions. And I really um, feel for those families who like are having to work in person. And so like either have to balance childcare or balance like the, the remote learning piece um, because it also where, where we are in Yadkin County, uh, the element, the, not the elementary school students are now in person throughout the week, okay. or at least have that option, but middle school and high school students also have the option of doing the hybrid A day, mm -hmm. B day, Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday, where everybody's wow. virtual on Wednesday. And like, that just seems like a nightmare, like childcare wise to me. And so like, we could pull it off because my wife is also working virtually and has the ability to kind of compress her schedule down mm -hmm. um, to work particular days. Um, and I have the freedom to kind of do what I need to do uh, to make that work. 
but just like can't imagine doing doing all of this and also having kind of a job that I have to go into nine to five. Exactly. Yeah, we've um, there is a group of kids that uh, our kids play tennis with, mm-hmm. and we felt safe with that because it's an outdoor activity. Mm-hmm. And so that we call ourselves the tennis moms. <laughs> and so we sit around outside while the kids are playing tennis twice a week. And we have just, um, one has had to quit her job. Uh, one is she travels a lot for work. And of course, travel has been grounded, but she now, um, because she can't travel, she has to work with some international time zones mm-hmm. um, as far as work is concerned. So we've got parents that, in this little group, we've got um, us who are fully remote. We've got uh, one family who uh, does a small pod and has brought in a teacher um, with their neighbors um, who is in their, their backdoor pod that they have, uh, their backyard pod. We have one family who's in a pod with two other students and the parents, the moms handle the pod three okay. days a week. Mm-hmm. And then we have another family who um, is just, they're doing the best that they can. Yeah. You know, they're like, if the kids get all the assignments done, great. Mm-hmm. If not, we'll make them up on the weekend. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. so I know for us, so we've got a two year old and then a three month, three month old later this week. Um, so for the three month old. Already? Yeah, yeah. Already. Um, so the three month old, like, he's got his own schedule and does his own thing. Um, the two-year-old w- wasn't in daycare at the beginning of the pandemic, went back to daycare and we pulled him out a couple weeks ago just mm. for the winter, just because of the numbers and the way that they're going. Um, uh, but like for him, like he has memories of church and like mm-hmm. the daycare, like is in walking distance from, from the church in my office. So I pick him up and we because of the one-way nature of the street, we'd have to drive out by the church, and he'd always mm. kind of wave at the church and go, hi, church, and go, daddy's church, mommy's church, Hen- Henry's church, uh, and he'd list all the people whose church it was, um, and now, like, he can, whenever I go to work, um, sometimes during the week, but especially on Sundays, like, he knows, like, we're going to watch daddy on TV um, mm. because we're doing virtual worship, Yeah, and so it's, like, for him, like, just the being in church and the, the contact with people in church and the being loved in church, um, it would be the faith formation that he'd be getting at this stage anyway, which he's just like not getting uh, outside the family um, just because of the nature of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, how are your kids handling kind of, or how are you and your family handling faith formation? Uh, Cause I know you guys are still completely virtual with at least with worship and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Well, before I answer that, I was going to ask you, mm-hmm. how is he handling the being out just from school, the school perspective? How is he yeah. handling being out, going back in and then coming back out again? Uh, so like there is a transition each time, um, but he like he settled in um, like when he was when we, we went back to daycare, um, like he settled into like getting his temperature taken and uh, playing with all of his friends and um since he's been out now for i guess close to a month uh but a couple weeks ago he was just like would was talking about his friends at school um um in the way that two-year-olds can talk about them just by saying mm-hmm. their names um and so like that was a little bit heartbreaking because he's not seeing them anymore um but for the most part like he's like settling into and settled into a new routine um and for for him uh, like having that routine and that structure has been really, really good, even though it's like two year old structure of yeah. you wake up. Uh, some days you get to watch your 30 minutes of TV, depending on like how tired dad is when and how early you wake up. So true. You, so you, eat, true. Your, you eat your breakfast. I, I'll go to work and, and then uh, Carrie, my wife, stays home and like they'll go outside, they'll go on their walk. Um, mm-hmm. We did from our neighbors acquire a their old like play set um mm-hmm. so now he has like a big slide and swings in the backyard and has been loving that's that awesome. that's awesome he, well yeah. i'm glad that you know he's kind of at the age where he can be flexible yeah, enough yeah. um that and he's not going to remember any of this um 
in one of the things that we, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back to answering your question. Uh, we're, we're the way that we're trying to remember this and frame this um, in our family. Uh, we're trying to think of it as it's a, it's a, it's different. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's a once in a lifetime thing. Um, but you had asked about faith formation and worship and church. And so my children were in a play um, on March 13th and 14th. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know if they were going to be able to pull off the play because the governor had given the um, orders for nobody, uh, no groups over a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, so they were able to get in the play. And then Saturday night, almost overnight, we had to transform the only real open space that we had in our house into a worship space mm -hmm. so that we could go virtual for yeah. Sunday morning, March 15th. And um, that happens to be my children's playroom, which mm -hmm. is the room over the garage. So their world has been rocked in that we have taken up half of their playroom and it's got recording equipment yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and tripods with lights and, mm -hmm. you know, all of the stuff and, and microphones and everything. Um, and at first we, we did, we kind of created a playground situation where they could be in there while we were live. And we would have, you know, Hey, if you hear children, that's because the children are in the service with us while we're live. Mm -hmm. And then we started recording when we got kicked off of both Facebook live and YouTube live on Easter Sunday in the middle Ooh. of the worship service. Yeah. Um, and we just decided that um, Mason's church, I, I say we, because I'm the tech person. Mm -hmm. I now have become a tech person for his yeah. church. Um, Mason's church just said, you know, we're just do it pre-recording. So mm -hmm. we had been pre-recording and I would edit and we would try a lot really hard to pre-record um, early enough so that at least on Saturdays, the kids could have their playroom all to mm -hmm. themselves. The really weird thing for them though, has been Sunday mornings. Um, yeah. They are so used to going to church primarily with dad to dad's mm -hmm. church. Um, as a campus minister, I work, my, my worship is Tuesday nights. And then on Sundays, I just fill pulpits as there's a need. So there are a few churches that I've been to before that I'm comfortable taking my children with me because mm -hmm. they know people. Otherwise they go with dad. And so Sunday mornings, we have really tried to make it as unique as possible and do things that families can normally do on Sunday morning that we can't mm -hmm. um we'll make cinnamon rolls yeah don't don't get excited they're just the pillsbury rolls <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't cook <laughs> um but we'll make cinnamon rolls and then we'll let them watch tv on sunday morning mm -hmm. until it's time for church and then they'll come down in their pajamas and watch church and then we'll we would we would always order um we'll order takeout from a mm -hmm. local restaurant to support local still and um kind of do that and and they there have been sundays now that they're just tired of that mm -hmm. i mean obviously they i have two extroverts um and i'm an introvert and so it's a lot mm -hmm. um they would rather see all the people and give all the hugs and yeah. the high fives and be up in people's faces at church um than just come downstairs and sit on the couch and watch church watch dad on the tv um sometimes mom on the TV, but it's been, it's been hard. Uh, mm -hmm. For a while I tried to, um, one of my favorite resources is illustrated ministries. Oh, yeah. And so for a while I would print out the sheets that they would give um, and have the kids color during church, kind of like if they had a children's mm -hmm. bulletin and then they got tired of that. And they don't even want to sing during the hymns because there's really nobody to sing with. It's yeah. just the four of us. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been really hard, um, for, for this age group and I don't know, what do y'all do on Sunday morning? I mean, how does Sunday morning work for you? Does it even feel like a holy space and time? So like we're, we're still live. Um, we do zoom okay. and, and fa zoom, zoom to Facebook live. Gotcha. Uh, so like at the beginning, like when zoom was still figuring out, like, Oh man, at, at 11 o'clock or from nine to 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings, we all of a sudden have all this traffic that we weren't having before. So like in the beginning it was rough and we've, and like in the beginning I was also doing worship from home. Um, mm -hmm. So like figuring out space around that was, was interesting. And 
we kept making little adjustments that made it slightly better for, for me. Um, uh, but now we're doing Zoom from our worship space, from our sanctuary and from our family life center, um, depending on the Sunday. Uh, and Carrie stays home with the boys and they watch, uh, watch, okay. they plug the computer into, into the TV mm-hmm. and watch, watch that way. Um, um, so like, yeah. it's been different, but for me, it's still been like, I go to this place and do this thing. Um, but for the family, but for they the family, are, they're at home and they don't mm-hmm. see dad yep. doing his thing in person. Yep. So they, yeah. they watch on, watch on TV and. Um, our oldest, uh, he, like, he knows, like, we're going to watch dad on, on, at -hmm. church and like, it's a thing, but like, he's still, he's still too. So like, if we're in, in the facility and everyone was gathering for in-person worship, like he'd just be all over the place and saying hi to people and, uh, being, pretending to be shy. And then, Mm -hmm. uh, at the, like one of the last services we had, um, before the pandemic hit, uh, he just like, uh, came up the aisle um, while I was doing the benediction. I was just like, held my hand while I did the benediction, and like, oh. like, just like this, uh, walking back and forth and being present in the space um, mm-hmm. that he doesn't get to do. There were a couple weeks after his brother was born where he came, uh, and one of the youth came and watched him while we were recording. Uh, but even that was different. Like, I don't think he like had a like because there weren't other people there when I was preaching like he's just like dad's just standing there talking mm-hmm. um and so like he wanted to be up in in that preaching space um and so like the the absence of people really does influence how especially like at at 2 3 and i i guess probably even for your kids like the the yeah. faith formation is just the people so um, much and being loved um, and being being cared for absolutely so i don't know how you are as a pastor parent um but i i, I know that this is a family um recording right now <laughs> conversation but i suck at it um and I, and I remind congregations that I do this as a vocation. Um, I am called to this and I spend a lot of time um, in conversation mm-hmm. and in study and in preparation and leading. And so when I get home, which there's really no separation between home and work right now, Anymore, but you yeah. know, usually, usually during home hours, I'm not, I'm not teaching my children. Mm-hmm the ways of, you know, church life or, uh, religious, uh, formation Mm -hmm. and things like that. My children have learned how to hold a hymn book by watching people hold a hymn book, hold a hymn book. My Mm -hmm. children know the Lord's prayer because they have learned it, saying it beside generations. Mm -hmm. Um, my children, you know, they, they know the ins and outs. Um, I have this beautiful story of uh, serving at, at uh, supplying at one church where I have a great relationship. And mm-hmm. um, Lily, my youngest, uh, at the time she was five and we were, it was a communion Sunday. Mm-hmm. And so, and in the Presbyterian church, some churches don't have communion every Sunday. So it was a communion Sunday. And we talked about communion. Um, it was around July 4th. So we kind of talked about communion as being this meal, kind of like a picnic where Jesus was gathered with friends. And so we set the communion table uh, with a picnic blanket and, you know, brought all the elements out of the picnic basket. And I went and I'd asked the children to help set the table. And I asked the children to help uh, be the ones to invite everybody to come forward. Um, and I went to go hand um, the bread to, actually, I, I was, I was going to be holding the bread. I was handing the juice to one of the elders that was serving with me. And I asked my daughter to hold the bread for a second Mm -hmm. while I could hand the juice off. And I turned around and this daughter who likes to be in the space, I remember those moments. Um, she, she took the bread and people at this point were already coming forward to take communion and I looked at her and I said, okay, Lily, I'll take this back. And she went, Mm-mm. 
She's like, no. And you know, the mom in me is like, don't fight with me right now. <laughs> just not right now. Just give the bread the back. Pastor, that's right. Just give me the bread. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. um, and the pastor in me stepped back because people had come forward and she took the bread to the first person and said, this is Jesus for you. Mm -hmm. And that moment I said, this is the most holy thing that could possibly happen because these children understand that they are invited to this table mm -hmm. and this is who they are and that they are able to stand up and say, you know, this is for me, but this is for you too. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are the things that we're not having. Yeah. Um, you know, when we are pre-recording communion, they get, they, they'll take the leftover English muffin that we break mm -hmm. and they'll eat it and they think it's fun, but they don't get to, to watch people come forward and to sing the hymns around it and to say the prayers together with anybody but us yeah. and occasionally grandma and grandpa who come, who come yeah, visit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been, I'm really glad that you asked me to have this conversation with you because I've been so in the thick of just getting day to day, mm -hmm. um, of, especially with school, you know, making sure they get the assignments done and everything that I haven't really stopped to think so much about how this is impacting them mm -hmm. in their faith lives, because I don't focus on it at home. Yeah. I mean, there are some nights when I'm like, Jesus loves you. Go to bed. <laughs> Love you. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there are other days when I'm like, let's, let's, let's just sit down and let's just spend some time together and talk about how this is impacting you and how it's impacting me. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and I, I really hope that, I hope that for your kids ages, that this, I don't know. I don't want to say that this is, um, like an irreparable time in their mm -hmm. lives. Like you, like this is irreparable damage and faith formation. I don't, yeah. I don't want to go that far, but this is such a formative time mm -hmm. in their understanding of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it's important to us as, um, parents and those who have, have vowed to raise children in a faith-based home, um, I just, I really hope that, that this ends soon enough yeah, <laughs> or yeah. goes back to some kind of normalcy so that your children can get back into being up in dad's mm -hmm. space while he's preaching yeah. and giving the benediction. Yeah. And I guess for, for your kids, like they, they do have, like there is, they have that ground of, like they, they did go to church every, mo I guess every Sunday, um, mm -hmm. or at least most Sundays, 50 Sundays out of the year. Um, yep and like have that kind of foundation to lean back on. And then like my kids are, you know, they're kind of coming, uh, our oldest at least is coming into it. Our youngest still has like another six, eight months before like mm -hmm. it really becomes, becomes something that uh, he's, he'll be really aware of. Um, but yeah, like that sense of, I don't know, not, not getting this time back is real. Um, especially like, and, and I think we talk about it a lot in terms of education. We talk about it like in, in the schools and getting to see family, like, like, especially right now, like we're recording this right before Thanksgiving. So, uh, all of the ho holiday traditions, like we don't get mm -hmm. Thanksgiving or Christmas Advent 2020 back, um, to do over. Um, and, and so we talk about that a lot, but I don't know that we talk about faith formation a whole lot, um, or at least I haven't heard anyone talking about it a whole lot. And maybe yeah. that maybe that's on me, like as, as a, a, a pastor, that I haven't been talking about it. Um, but well, also, and I think that goes back to we're as the pastors, we're also just trying to to juggle all the balls yeah, yeah. and the the people that would mm -hmm. normally be there to help us with everything. Yeah. Um, and to plan the mm -hmm. extra events yeah. um, and the extra special mm -hmm. things around these times of year, they're not around. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so when we do, you know, our family ends up for better or worse, taking a back seat mm -hmm. um, with, with all of that. Um, 
Yeah, one of the things that we have tried to do, and I don't know where I got the idea. I do know that it came from a children's ministry director at a church. Mm -hmm. I overheard um, someone talking about how their church children's director said, oh, we'll create this little time capsule. And I thought, hmm, that's an idea. So we have what we call the blue box. And this blue box is, it's, it was literally, oh, I have a box we can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but inside of it is things mm -hmm. that all have some kind of significance of things that have happened during this time. Mm -hmm. So like both of my kids had a birthday. So we have a birthday candle. Uh, one of my children ended up in the emergency room. So we have the bracelet. Um, you know, we have some pictures from events. We have uh, cards that they have, some cards that they have received. We have a, a note from one of the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, we're tr just trying to kind of keep some things in yeah. here. Um, you know, we have an Easter card because we thought this would be over after yeah. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> and yet here we are. Um, you know, even, even something like the, this year we missed like the blessing of the backpacks because mm -hmm. our kids didn't have backpacks. Yeah. So yeah. our kids um, got iPads this mm -hmm. year. And so we gave them stickers that they could. Illustrated children's ministry, on illustrated their, ministry yep, stickers. Yep. Illustrated yeah. ministries. That's yeah. right. Um, so we gave them these and then on their uh, notebooks, they have these, which is um, another one of my mm -hmm. colleagues um, who uh, vibrant church communications uh, she made these so we're you know we're trying to give them things yeah, yeah. just to remember mm -hmm. who you are um, and that you are loved even in this mm -hmm. weird time yep. and that you have this uh, because you are so loved you have this responsibility to make sure other people mm -hmm. um, love. feel that love mm -hmm. as well yeah. we um I, I shared with you a picture. Yeah, yeah. Um, we made, uh, this definitely came from one of my seminary colleagues, uh, Megan Argerbright. She's a mm -hmm. pastor in Charlotte. Um, about a week into the pandemic, she put, made a chalkboard and just stuck it to a tree mm -hmm. in our front yard. And I don't know if hers is still going or not, uh, but we actually made a chalkboard installation um, in our front yard. And uh, so I sent, I took a picture this morning and uh, the picture this morning, it says, uh, be kind, be just, just be kind. Um, we have this chalkboard that the kids painted and put up. We have a bucket on it that has chalk. Mm -hmm. And occasionally we'll put things up like for happy birthday for the kids or yeah. Merry Christmas mm -hmm. or happy Thanksgiving or whatever. But that piece that's on there, um, somebody in the neighborhood just wrote that on there. And it's been so much fun just mm -hmm. to just to share a little bit of a space for people to share joy yeah. and love. Um, and so one of the things that we have done is, you know, we don't have so much of the teaching, the pieces of mm -hmm. worship and the pieces of church. Yeah. We've actually been able to move into having more conversation about what is it, what does life look like as a Christian? probably earlier than we would have yeah. um, with our kids. Those are the things that you kind of talk about in middle school, youth group mm -hmm. and high school and college. Yeah. Um, but especially over the summer um, when there were all the protests going on and things, we talked a lot about what is that, how does that impact us and how do mm -hmm. we have impact in that as yeah. well? Um, and what is our responsibility mm -hmm. as followers of Christ? Um, but this is just, it's just such so a weird, weird, hard time right yeah. now. Yeah, and I guess like what you just said, like strikes me because at least for the first like portion of, of Christian kids lives, like the formation, like you've got VBS and you've got all this other stuff where we're trying to like do like basic face faith formation like lay these building blocks and you've got worship where like you learn the lord's prayer you learn how to use the hymnal you learn when to sit and stand up and sit down uh like that kind of stuff um and we it just kind of we we hope that it absorbs somehow like just through the rote repetition of it um mm -hmm. but like you're right like this is an opportunity to like 
do the kind of harder, like what does a Christian look like? Um, and let our kids kind of fill in those gaps uh, mm -hmm. of, of what they think being a Christian looks like um, without necessarily like um, relying upon the, the worship uh, worship space to form. Um, I don't know if that's yes, good or bad this, or just different. And, and also not really relying on the Sunday school teachers to yeah. be the ones to teach it. Mm -hmm. This is, this has been a time of, you know, people, we talk to our kids about the fact that the masks keep us safe and they keep other people safe. But we really, we do it because we love other people and yeah. we don't want to be responsible for other people yeah. be, becoming ill. Um, yeah. Or it, we, when we go to the grocery store, when I make a list, mm -hmm. uh, we have a bag of food that we uh, will, throughout the month, we'll put a bag together and I'll make mm -hmm. a list for the grocery store and the kids will look in the bag and they'll say, all right, we need to get some more cereal or we need to get some more whatever. And normally I would let them go to the store with me. Mm -hmm. right now yeah um but they get to help me put the list together and then it's they one of them each month will take the responsibility of putting the bag in the place where it gets picked up for the yeah. food bank and mm -hmm. um you know just realizing that i mean we've even had conversations about the fact that they 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 get to be able to be at home and have inner i mean we had a long conversation about internet access mm -hmm. Um, and how the fact that internet access allows people to be able to worship right now, mm -hmm. and it allows students to be able to have school, um, and it allows parents to be able to work. Um, and my son's mind was blown when he realized that internet didn't just happen because he opened his computer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, we talked about what, what a privilege it is to be able to afford mm -hmm. to have that access. Yeah. Um, that the access isn't, isn't guaranteed and not everyone has it. And so there, exactly. there are differences in opportunity, even, even there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and these are also things that we think about as I'm sure you've had the conversations with your church leadership about, well, what do we do for our members that don't watch online? You know, yeah. how do we make sure that they get uh, to be able to still participate in the life of church? Um, we, uh, we, Right as this all began, we put together lint bags. So the kids mm -hmm. helped us put bags together in the, you know, Lily, you put the crosses in, Luke, yeah, you yeah. put the nails in, you know. <laughs> so we lined up all the bags in the living room, mm -hmm. made them. And then the kids spent two days in the car with us driving around and delivering the bags and a hymn book to churches and or to church members. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was a lot of fun to like do the ding dong dash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, you know, we made a little game yeah. out of it, but um, they, they got to realize that um, that was, I think that was their first realization that church mm -hmm. was going to be different Yeah. and it was going to be different for a while. And that, um, there really is something to the space mm -hmm. and the things that you have uh, to help create routine mm -hmm. and um, feeling holy yeah. uh, during, during a time. So I've talked a lot. Yeah, you're good. Sorry. That's the idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. the idea, but I've talked a lot. Um, yeah, and even that feeling of like being holy, I think is something that, um, like even adults struggle with in this time. So like oh being, being a parent, nurturing your own, own kind of faith life, and then also being responsible all of a sudden in a way, like parents have always been responsible for the faith life of their children. Um, but like part of that responsibility is like making sure they go to church or participate in, in the life of yep. life of the church in different ways. And so it's like all of a sudden, like this big thing that we did to make sure we were meeting this obligation, um, uh, of plugging our, our kids into, into Christian community, like suddenly we can't do it. So. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. And I've, I've had conversations with, um, colleagues who they, as you know, from their professional role are feeling inadequate mm -hmm. because, you know, they're like, well, I want to offer these things to families, but families just can't add another thing to their plate yeah. right now. 
And so we're, you know, we're trying to figure out the best way to serve families mm -hmm. so that they don't feel so overwhelmed by yeah. having to take on this extra duty. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, it's professionally and yeah. parenting. I mean, I, I'm, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. I really suck at it. I mean, I'm really good at tucking my children in and mm -hmm. um I'm going to let you in on the blessing that we say to them each night. Um, don't tell Luke because he would get really mad. Um, when I was, when we were with family, um, recently, I blessed my niece with our nightly blessing. And he looked at me and he was like, that's ours. Why, why are you telling other people that, um, our blessing mom, that's right. That's ours. Why are you doing this? So our blessing, um, I realized when I had my son, that I was never going to be able to um, let my child, I, I didn't think that I was going to be able to adequately let my children know how much they are loved. Mm -hmm. um, and if they, if they didn't take anything else away from being pastor's children, I wanted them to know that there was nothing that they could do. Romans, there's nothing that you can do that will separate you from the love of God. So we, um, I would put my son to bed at night and I would tell him, um, um, I love you more than you'll ever know. And almost as much as God loves you. So I want them to know that. And that is our nightly blessing. Mm -hmm. Well, then they learned from friends that they're, they have a nightly blessing, um, where they, uh, tell each other, the kids and the parents tell each <laughs> other, um, rest well, beloved child of God. Mm -hmm. So now we have this nightly blessing that is this whole production <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's turned into like crossing and hearts on the forehead. And so basically it boils down to, um, I love you more than you'll ever know. And almost as much as God loves you. And we, I'll say part of it and they'll mm -hmm. say the rest back. And then we say, rest well, beloved child of God. And then they'll say, rest well, beloved mommy of God, which is <laughs> kind of funny because yeah. I'm like, huh, yeah. well, <laughs> I'm a mommy and I'm of God. God. So we'll just let yeah. that go. Let's slide um, it. That's right. We'll just yeah. roll with it right now. Yeah. And then um, we will also uh, just wish, wish each other sweet dreams. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's this whole thing mm -hmm. that I have realized during this pandemic, if that's the only thing I can get done as a parent right now, mm -hmm. I'm at least getting that done. Yeah. And there are days when I struggle to even get that done but it has become so ingrained in them that you, the first time they repeated it back to me, it was, I was like, okay, you know, yeah. there is something to this and they are, they are internalizing this and realizing this. And, um, you know, if that's the only thing I can get done on a day as a parent, as far as faith formation during the middle of a global pandemic, then I think I'm doing okay. Yeah. 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 Bedtime rituals are just, I guess like we could do an entire episode just on bedtime rituals um, yeah. with our, our two year old has had the same bedtime ritual since he started sleeping in his own room um, that involves every night we sing peace like a river. Um, and at some point, like I got bored with peace like a river. So like I started singing peace like a river in Spanish um, because I was doing a lot of Duolingo and wanted to translate mm -hmm. it. So now we do peace like a river and then we do the first verse again in Spanish, which like oddly enough is the only verse he started. It's like the verse that he started singing along with. Oh. Uh, but then we start praying and last week um, just as he's gotten more vocal and like really leaned into making complete sentences. Um, I just asked him like, who do you want to pray for? Um, which has just been like an interesting insight. Um, into like the way both the way his mind works and what he's concerned about mm -hmm. um because one week like one night it was um some of our friends who live in dc so uncle chuck and he says uncle caitlin um and megan um so he's like i want to pray for them and but like most nights it's um monkeys and piggies yep. and mm -hmm. Uh, he's got a couple other animals that he can pretty consistently lists. Um, but uh, so it might have also been because we were going to the zoo. Um, so like he, was hey, just, he had animals on his brain. Um, but sometimes he just goes animals. Um, <laughs> like what, was it? what do you want to pray for? And I'll go animals. Animals. It's like okay, well we'll pray for animals. That's right. Um, yeah. So like even even that like little thing of like you you have 
the ability to pray and to choose what we're talking to God about. Um, That's right. I think has been been really important, and it's also just fun to hear what he to hear what he has to say about like who do you want to pray for? Animals. Animals. And he just says it so matter of fact. Any in particular? Nope, just animals. Animals. Animal, in general, yeah. animals. Monkeys and pigs. Monkeys. Dogs. See, and we and I do. I miss yeah. that part. Um, mm-hmm. We used to have prayers for all yeah. of our stuffed mm-hmm. friends. Yeah. That we slept with. I miss that. I mean, yeah. we pray for Momo and yeah. Bear because we're really creative with names for stuffed yeah. animals in our house. We have Bear and Bunny and Squirrel. Yeah, he's he's got um a, the caterpillar from Hungry Hungry Caterpillar, uh-huh. um, whose name is Hungry, and then right. see that's creative. Yeah, and then a blue bear, uh, who we didn't name, but like it's tag just said jelly bean. So we're like, well, this bear's name is jelly bean. So he's got hungry and jelly bean. Um, but he's like, he's growing up. He's in that stage of like things starting to scare him. So like now hungry and jelly bean sleep at his feet instead of at his head. Um, okay. but he, he still wants them in the crib, just on the other mm-hmm. side of the crib. Um, yeah. But- so when we, um, interestingly enough, when we had the, that kind of phase, mm-hmm. Um, we talked a lot about the fact, uh, oh, and Hungry and Jelly Bean, you know, Momo yeah. and FOMO and all them, they would meet, have to go with us everywhere. Mm-hmm. We talked a lot about the fact that our friends have to stay in our bed during the daytime yep. because they need to get their sleep. They sleep mm-hmm. during the daytime so they can stay up at night um, and make sure you're safe all yeah. night long. And so that kept us from having to drag 15 stuff friends around with us everywhere we went. Yeah. Um it's funny like he's got a like he's got a moose that uh he loves playing with outside of the crib but like if you try to put it in the crib he's like no the moose does not live in the crib (laughs) it is unacceptable okay moose can stay over here yeah 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 oh that's great well um so we are well over uh our (laughs) a lot of time but you know i i enjoyed the conversation i probably uh if you're hearing this, I didn't cut anything out really. Um, so, uh, so I hope you enjoyed it and got to this part. Uh, but uh, a few resources that we mentioned um, that if you want to um, uh, incorporate some more faith formation uh, into your time with your kids or grandkids, um, Illustrated Ministry is a great resource. Um, they have weekly bulletins that go along with the lectionary. So uh, I preach uh, through Advent, I'll be preaching the lectionary, so their stuff will line up. Um, if you're at one of our Yakinville folks, and a lot of churches do the lectionary, mm-hmm. um, they also have just Advent resources, uh, so Advent wreaths and all that kind of stuff. Um, there are also uh, resources out there where you can find prayers for uh, blessing your uh, Christmas tree or um, your Christmas lights. Um, yes, um, Tracy Smith who is an author. Um, she is, she's a pastor in, I believe, Chicago. Fabulous author. She has written a book called Faithful Families, and it now has different iterations. Um, we use Faithful Fam- Families prayers for the everyday. So we've said prayers for birthday cakes and Christmas trees and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but she also now has an Advent book as well. So ways to make things, um, you know, Advent a faithful holy space at home, especially if you're going to be missing out on a lot of the church pieces. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and you can sign up for a weekly Tuesday newsletter from her, uh, from her website, which I believe is just tracysmith.com. Yeah. Um, I'll put that link down below. Perfect. And she will, um, she'll send, she's, she's doing, the, the book was scheduled to come out. Um, and then she is also, um, in her weekly emails, ways to adapt it for pandemic life. Um, so she's very, very thoughtful about that kind of stuff. Um, and if we, if you'll give me one more second, I have a book here. It just came in and I'm so excited about it. Um, I don't know if you know about Matthew Paul Turner, but he is a fantastic children's book author. This is his brand new book. Um, the colors, all the colors of Christmas. Um, a couple of other books that he has are When I Pray for You, mm-hmm. When God Made You, When we God ha- okay, Made Yeah, We the Have world. When God Made You. Yeah. Yep. So this is his newest book that just came out. Um, and it's uh, it is fabulous. Um, Christmas is red 
It's a shiny new sled. It's candy canes and toy store lanes. It sprinkles on sweet bread. Mm -hmm. So it's everything in rhymes. Oh, look at what I just turned to the whole family. Um, everything rhymes. So it's great for little kids, but also, um, you know, it's a good, it's just a really Matthew get his stuff. Um, and I am not being paid to, <laughs> to advertise the, yeah, his resources yeah. i use his resources with my college students mm -hmm. too so yeah yeah all right well uh say thank you to katie and uh um for her giving us uh her time today to talk about parenting and uh faith especially in the midst of a pandemic and if you have anything that your family has been doing uh that uh, has meant a lot to you um throughout this pandemic, especially when it comes to faith formation, uh, drop it down in the comments, let us know. We'd love to hear, um, hear some ideas that didn't come, come from us or that we might not have run across before. I would um, love to borrow them yeah. for my family. Yeah. So yes, please share. And uh, make sure that you like this video and uh, subscribe to the channel so that you can see all the stuff as it comes out. But thank you very much for watching and we will talk to you soon.